Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an American comedy film called Billy Madison. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Billy Madison is a spoiled 27-year-old man-child. All he does is drink, play silly pranks with his friends, and stare at nude magazines for hours. He hasn't grown a day since middle school, much to his father Brian's annoyance. Brian is the founder of one of the largest restaurant chains in the US. He always had the wish to pass down his fortune to his son, but because of Billy's lifestyle, he is rethinking the decision. One day, Brian invites his business associates for dinner at his house. Two of the guests at the dinner are the company's executive vice president, Eric, and operations manager, Carl. Eric and Carl are close to Brian and help him make all the important decisions about the company. Brian wants to officially announce his retirement, but Billy interrupts him every time he starts to talk. Eric doesn't like Billy and does everything he can to keep him childish, so he won't be appointed as chairman of the company. He makes faces at Billy, making him yell gibberish. In the end, Brian yells at Billy to get out. Following that, he goes out with his friends to a fast food restaurant. As usual, they talk like kids and prank older people. Back in the mansion, Eric lays down all the childish things that Billy has said and done and convinces Brian he isn't eligible to take over the business. Carl, on the other hand, claims that there is still hope for Billy, but Eric dismisses him. In reality, he wants to be promoted as the president, so he is doing everything in his power to remove his biggest competition. Later at night, Brian calls Billy to his study room to inform him of something big. He reveals that he has decided to hand the business over to Eric, who he thinks is the most competent and capable of being president. Billy is in shock because his father has never refused to give him something, let alone their family business. He argues that Eric is cruel and uncaring, but Brian is adamant about his decision. He reveals that back when Billy was in high school, he had bribed the high school teachers to give him passing grades. Not just that, but every grade Billy ever passed was because Brian somehow bribed the teacher, including the second grade, where he spelled back as B-A-K and still passed. Since Billy isn't even a high school graduate, there is no room for him to go against the decision. Desperate to be heard, Billy proposes a deal to his father. He promises to study in each grade of school for two weeks and pass them all. If he manages to do so, Brian will be sure of his worthiness and hand the company over to him. But if he doesn't, Eric will be named the president. Brian likes the idea and makes some calls to get his son into the first grade. The next day, the housemaid, Juanita, makes Billy a lunchbox and sends him off to catch the school bus. He waits for it, but the bus passes him by without stopping. When he reaches the school with his father, the first person he sees is the third grade teacher, Veronica. She recognizes Billy as the spoiled rich kid and instantly dislikes him. Following the brief encounter, Billy goes to his class and meets his new little friends. He gets along with them pretty quickly because even though he is older, his personality is no different from theirs. They listen to stories, play dodgeball, sleep during nap time, and do the regular things that first graders do. After school, a kid's mother comes to pick him up and flirts with Billy. She is even more intrigued when her son informs her that he is his classmate. The next two weeks are fun for Billy. He makes friends with everyone in the class and is well liked by his teacher, Miss Lippy. Although he sometimes accidentally eats glue, fights with the kids about video games, and has problems using the children's urinals, he is overall happy. After drawing a blue duck on a drawing test, he passes first grade and throws a huge graduation party for his friends. The party has a pinata stuffed with Rolex watches and expensive chocolates. His father, who had no faith in Billy, is pleasantly surprised that he passed. The only person not pleased about him passing the grade is Eric. He has even appointed the school's janitor to keep an eye on Billy. The second grade is more difficult than he had thought, especially because of the spelling tests. Billy goes against a little girl in a spelling competition, which he wins after spelling the word couch correctly. Because of the win, he passes and throws an even bigger party. He invites all of his friends and plays with them on water slides. Eric is also at the party and is planning to do something big to make Billy fail. Finally, in the third grade, Veronica turns out to be his teacher. Although she picks on him and doesn't really like him, Billy is motivated to go to school just to see her. 
He creates trouble in her class, simply to be noticed, making it clear that he likes her. One day, she finds him drawing pictures of half-naked girls in his notebook. To teach him a lesson, she asks him to write a few words on the board in cursive handwriting. He does pretty well for the first few words, but cannot seem to write the letter Z correctly. Veronica makes fun of him in front of the entire class and humiliates him. Billy bursts out shouting that he hates them all and runs home. The next morning, he pretends to be sick so he won't have to go to school again, but the maid, Juanita, tells him that he will have to help her shave her armpit if he stays home. Billy reluctantly goes to school, not wanting to face Veronica again. To his luck, she calls in sick that very day. In her place, the principal of the school, Mr. Anderson, takes the class. During recess, Billy receives several cards since it is also Valentine's Day. He is the coolest guy in the class and is liked by many girls. After school, Billy and his third grade friend, Ernie, hang out at his house. Billy misses Veronica and asks Ernie to call her to see if she likes him too. Ernie talks to her normally before asking her if she would date anyone from their class. Veronica calls Billy immature and ends the phone call. The next day is the school field trip. On their way to the location, some guys dare Billy to touch Veronica's chest. He happily accepts the challenge and pretends to fall on top of her. Veronica, on the other hand, playfully calls him out for it as the kids laugh at him. Later, Billy apologizes to her for what happened and she forgives him. Then, he notices Ernie standing alone in a corner and finds out that he has wet his pants. To help his friend, Billy also wets his crotch and claims that peeing yourself is cool. All the children follow his lead and wet their pants one after another. After seeing him help Ernie, Veronica starts to like Billy. In the following scene, Billy throws a third party on passing the third grade. This one is even bigger than the former two parties combined. Kids run around the huge park that he has arranged in front of his mansion. Veronica also comes to the party and gives him snack packs as a graduation gift. Billy shows her around as they talk about different things. They eventually end up inside a tent and are about to kiss when Carl interrupts them. He warns Billy of Eric, who is planning something for his downfall. Billy thanks him for the warning but doesn't think much of it. Starting that day, he studies hard and passes the next four grades without any problem. It has been a while since he met Veronica, so he kisses her picture when he misses her. He is still best friends with the third grade students and hangs out with them during the lunch break. They often invite him to play soccer, but the more he is promoted to upper grades, the busier he gets. When he passes the eighth grade, he organizes yet another party to celebrate his entry to high school. The school's principal, Mr. Anderson, meets Eric in private during the party. Eric has done some digging and found out about Anderson's double life. Turns out that he used to be a wrestler who accidentally killed a man by sitting on him for too long. If people find out about this, he will lose his job as the principal. Eric takes advantage of this situation and blackmails him. He wants Anderson to spread a rumor that Billy bribed him to pass the tests. With no other way out, Mr. Anderson agrees to the lie. The next day is Billy's first day in high school. The last time he was in high school, Billy was one of the popular guys. He had thought that it would be the same this time around as well. But in contrast, no one pays attention to him. During chemistry class, he makes obnoxious jokes about the teacher, but no one laughs. A girl even asks him to not talk to her because he is a loser and she doesn't want to be made fun of. One of the cool kids drops curry on top of his head. Billy misses his third grader friends and goes to meet them during recess. When asked about high school, he lies and claims that everyone is nice to him and he is having a great time. At home, he realizes that when he was popular, he also bullied the introverted kids. He calls one of them, named Danny, and apologizes to him. While on the phone, Danny simply forgives him, but after the call, he crosses out Billy's name from his people to kill list. Later that day, Principal Anderson publicly announces that he was bribed by Billy to give him passing grades. A disappointed Brian hands over the company to Eric and doesn't believe Billy when he tries to explain himself. Billy loses all hope and returns to his old lifestyle, partying all the time and pranking people. Veronica knows that he worked hard for the grades, hence she picks him up one day and beats him brutally, trying to motivate him to not give up without a fight. Meanwhile, Billy's third grade friends protest outside the principal's house, forcing him to come clean about Billy's grades and his lies. After finding out the truth, Brian is ready to give his son a second chance to continue high school. 
However, Eric protests and claims that since Billy didn't complete the ninth grade in two weeks, he isn't eligible for the company's presidency. When Brian still doesn't side with him, Eric threatens to sue him. Billy challenges him to an academic decathlon to finally settle their feud with the winner getting to take over the business. The next Friday, they gather at school for the competition. While Eric wins the math test, Billy does great in the pie cooking competition. Similarly, both of them win in some tests and lose in others. By the end of it, Billy is winning by a single point. The next day, everyone gathers at the auditorium for the final round that will determine the winner. Billy is asked a question about the Industrial Revolution and replies with a completely idiotic answer. Then, Eric is asked a question regarding business ethics. Eric, being an unethical businessman, has no answer to the question. On realizing that he is about to lose, he pulls out a revolver, ready to shoot Billy dead. He is saved when Anderson, in wrestling gear, tackles Eric. After recovering from the attack, he attempts to shoot Veronica, but before he can, he is shot by Danny, whom Billy apologized to earlier for bullying. In the following scene, Billy is at his graduation ceremony. He announces that he wants to pass the responsibility of his father's business onto Carl, who is more deserving than him. Billy also reveals that he plans to attend college in order to become a teacher. In the final scene, we see Eric walking away from the ceremony on crutches while the others celebrate. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.